Hi guys, welcome to Laplace Academy and today we are going to get started with our crash course on Simescape Fluids. Simescape is a module in the Simulink within MATLAB. It is devoted to simulating electrical, mechanical or hydraulic systems. In our first episode, we are going to get familiar with different libraries of Simescape and simulate a very simple hydraulic circuit. So let's go. First, after opening the MATLAB software, I have to go to Simulink. I can click on this button or I can type Simulink. Then I create a blank model. Now I go to Library Browser. Okay, and here I need to find Simescape. In this course, we are going to focus on the Foundation Library and the Fluids Library. That's all we are going to need. For today, I, I'm going to explain to you what are these different modules on their foundation library. The first one is electrical, which, as you can probably guess, it is devoted to electrical circuits and systems. The second one is gas. For example, if you want to model dry air, you need this one. But if you, you have moist air, you need this one. For example, imagine you are going to simulate a ventilation system or some air conditioner. You need moist air, of course. But the three modules we need most of the time are isothermal liquid, thermal liquid, and two-phase fluid. If your system has any kind of phase change, for example, imagine you have a condenser or an evaporator in which the liquid is going to convert into vapor or the gas phase is going to convert into liquid, you must go to two-phase fluids. But about the other two ones, if there is any meaningful temperature change within your system, you need thermal liquid. But for a lot of hydraulic systems, the temperature change is negligible and you can solve the problem with constant thermophysical properties, constant density, constant viscosity, and so on. That is when you, you're going to need isothermal liquid. The energy equations are not going to be solved for isothermal liquid. Now as the first simulation, I want to make it as simple as possible. I go to isothermal liquid and under the elements, I can see that there are some options here, like a flow resistance, a local restriction, which you can consider it as a valve or an orifice. You can have a pipe or a reservoir. My first model is going to be a pump which sends fluid from a low pressure reservoir into a higher pressure reservoir. So I need two reservoirs. The first one is low pressure and the second one is going to be high pressure. I double click on it and I can see that it is a constant pressure reservoir and its pressure is set to atmospheric pressure. I'm going to leave it unchanged. But for my second reservoir, which is going to be high pressure, I set it to the specified pressure. By default, it is atmospheric pressure, as you can see. I'm going to double it. So now I have my low pressure and high pressure reservoirs. Then I go to the sources and I add a flow rate source, which is basically a pump. I set it as a constant volumetric flow rate pump, which is going to transfer 0 0.2 meter cube per second. I rename it to pump. Then all I need to do is connecting these ports. So basically, I have a pump that takes the fluid from low pressure reservoir into a high pressure reservoir. But I cannot run the model yet because in any hydraulic systems, you need two blocks. One of them is the solver configuration block, which is basically some settings for your solver. And the other one is the fluid properties, since the Simulink has to know what is the, the fluid which is going to be transported from this reservoir into this reservoir. So I go to the utilities and add an isothermal liquid properties. If I double click on it and go to the description, I can see that the default liquid is water. So I leave the settings unchanged. And the second block I need, as I said, is a solver configuration block. 
I don't need to change any of its settings. So now I run my model and I can see it run perfectly with no errors. But right now it is meaningless because we don't know if it is solved correctly. And what are the numbers? What is, what is the pressure of any of these points? Or for example, what is the differential pressure that this pump has created? Instinctively, you can guess that the differential pressure that this pump has created is the difference of the pressure of high pressure and low pressure reservoirs. But did the simulink solve it correctly? Let's figure out. I go to the sensors library and I, here I have a pressure sensor. This pressure sensor basically displays the difference between this port and this port. PA minus PB. So since this port is high pressure and this one is low pressure, I need to rotate my sensor and connect it like this. So it is going to display the difference between A and B in pressure. I need a display tab to display the output. But as you can see, I cannot connect this port into this port. The reason behind this is that it is a physical signal and this one is a simulating signal. I cannot connect them directly unless I add a converter. I add a PS Simulink converter. PS stands for physical signal. I rotate it and now I can connect all of them. I run my model and as you can see the differential pressure provided by the pump is exactly the difference between the low pressure and high pressure reservoirs. I set the reservoir pressures in megapascals, but the value I have right here is in pascals. How can I change it to megapascals? I double click on the PS Simulink converter and in, and in the output signal unit, instead of inherit, I turn it into megapascals. Now I run the model again and I can see now it is in megapascals. I can double click on the display block and change the numeric display format to long. Now it is better. You see, it was so easy to make this model. Just to show that all of these steps is the same for thermal liquid, I'm going to repeat the process again one by one. So here we go. I go under the thermal liquid library and in the elements I look for reservoir. Here I need two reservoirs again. The first one is in atmospheric pressure. You can see that you can set the reservoir temperature right here because it is a thermal liquid system. But right now I'm going to leave it unchanged. For the second reservoir, I change its pressure to twice the atmospheric pressure. Then I need a pump. So I go to sources and add a flow rate source. I set it as a constant volumetric flow rate source with 0.2 cubic meter per second. I connect my ports together. Then I need a pr differential pressure sensor. I double click on it. Instead of absolute pressure, I change it to difference pressure. I will rotate it again and connect it to the output and input of the pump. As I said, I need a PS simulating converter and a display block. Under the utilities tab, I add a thermal liquid settings. If I double click on it, I can see that the default liquid again is water, so I'm going to leave it unchanged. Don't forget that you need a solver configuration block always. I connect it here and may have and I can have some additional settings. For example, the unit I can change it to megapascal. I run my model. Okay. I run it again and you can see that 
it is the same result. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. If you have any comments, please let me know in the comment section. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.